Hey gang, it's Royd Free Sr. here. Today I wanted to bring you an excerpt from my Great Jim's Great Men of the Golden Age book, um, which is about Suver's Jim, but this is particularly called Muscle and Ministry. Okay, and I'm just going to go right into it. So the sandy-haired youth in the jeans frowned slightly and jammed his hands into his pockets. Then with a shrug, he reluctantly followed the probation officer through the black iron gate. Just inside, the young man stopped dead in his tracks, and he stared. This is a gym, he exclaimed. you got to be kidding. The officer smiled. This is the place I've been telling you about. The sight before the boy was hardly that of an ordinary gym. Zuber's Gym and Muscle Hall of Fame in Costa Mesa, California, has to be one of a kind, and the same goes for its owner, Bob Zuber, an ordained minister and former weightlifter who originated and built the gym and its equipment. He says that it's a fun place to work out. Inside the heavy iron gate stands a fearsome-looking fiberglass gorilla, and not far away, a ten-foot superman and a fiberglass elephant lifting a barbell with its trunk. The door leading into the main gym weighs two tons. Everything inside is big. There's a thousand-pound lift, a 500-pound blob, Several unique racks. Bells ring and red lights flash when they're lifted. There is also the world's biggest drinking fountain made from a fire hydrant. How has God chosen to use the gym and its fantastic equipment to win souls to Christ? Let the Zoovers tell it. You need something unusual to interest the kids and the others who come in regularly to keep in shape, said Bob. The main purpose of the gym, added Jean, his dark-haired wife, is to build fitness and strength, not only in the physical realm, but also in the mental and the spiritual realms. Zuber's Gym has an amazing outreach. 600 members work out regularly, and thousands of others, men, women, children, have visited the children on tours and have heard of Jesus Christ. Housewives, former drug addicts, ex-cons, and yes, even muscle men belong to the club. And the ministry doesn't stop there. Bob is available for counseling, and he works closely with police and probation authorities. Additional gyms have been set up at the Juvenile Hall, at Joplin Ranch, and other youth and prison farms. Zuber's name is a household word to muscle heads and weightlifters throughout the world. Not only is the name synonymous with the zany gym, but it also stands for equipment made by the Zoovers in their own factory and sold to gyms throughout the country. Some of the world's biggest names in weightlifting were, have visited Zoovers Gym to set records. An all Orange County lineup of lifters Bob coached won the 68 United States Senior National uh, Powerlifting Championship Team Award. And I talk about that more in the remainder of the chapter on Zoovers. The gym has more unusual heavy-duty equipment than any other training facility in the world, and because of this, many of the country's strongest men have heard of Christ. Weightlifters need Christ too, declared Bob. That's why God literally built this gym. It all began in a small garage in 1960 after a whirlwind conversion at the age of 30. Bob Zuber attended a Bible college and became a, non, became a non-denominational minister. During this preparation, he taught Sunday school, and one Lord's, Day, one Lord's Day after class, two boys came to him. So the two boys then asked him whether he would teach them a few things about weightlifting. He agreed to help out with a few pieces of equipment that he had in his garage. And the word spread. Within a month, a hundred boys were meeting there. Within three months, the garage was bursting at the seams with boys, and Bob realized that he'd need to find a bigger place quickly. We started out with a makeshift bench and one set of weights, he explained. Gradually, we added to it and expanded, and every time we reached a point where we needed money, the Lord provided. When we were ready to pour the foundation for the new place, the Lord sent a Christian who owned a cement company and who happened to hear of our need. 
with several thousand dollars worth of cement. We stepped out in faith, and the Lord met each step. As for past history, Bob and Gene emphasized, we're interested in what God is doing now and is going to do in the future. This is his ministry, and we're just working for him. Bob had been a contractor and a Navy frogman before his conversion, and Gene had been a professional dancer. Both were interested in drama, and they met in an acting class. They were married later while Bob was stationed in Virginia with the Navy. After his discharge, they came to California. Bob was at loose ends, and his nerves were very bad. He was searching for peace of mind. For some reason, I was on my way to China to find it. I thought, how many problems can you have just walking around in a bunch of rice paddies? <laughs> but the Zoovers never got to China. One evening, not long before they were to set sail from California, Bob was on his way to a gym. He passed a little Assembly of God church and decided to go in. The Lord saved him that night, and within a short time, his entire family of 15, two brothers, their wives, and their children, were brought to Christ through his witness. One brother became a minister and a missionary to Mexico. The other is a Christian businessman. In each case, God has used the background of the individual to fulfill his unique purpose. Bob and Gene both had been trained for the physical fitness and beauty contest business. God was to use them in this special field. We have prayed over every piece of equipment in the gym and for every person who walks through the door, Gene said. The Lord has shown us that if you claim big things for him, you'll get them. That's the reason for the God is big sign on the wall. God isn't limited in his thinking. We shouldn't be either. Everything we have in the gym is to remind us of how big he is. It's a means of bringing people in to hear the gospel, a conversation piece, and a fun place as well. The Zoovers don't push religion down the throats of their members. If the Lord leads, he'll open the way to speak his word, they believe. Many people come into the gym just out of curiosity. One curious man saw the Christ as the answer sign located at the end of the gym, and it's 12 feet long. He saw the gospel barrel, which holds tracts and devotional material. And then Bob spoke to him briefly about the Lord. But it was about a year and a half later when that man came knocking on the Zuber's door at home. I remember the things you told me, he said to Bob, and I'm ready now to accept the Lord. The same sign has been instrumental in other decisions for Christ. One man who came to the Zuber's do door early on Sunday evening asked to see the gym. He didn't see much more of the gym than the sign, though. I've been running from God, he told Bob, and I believe that he sent me here to talk to you. Zoovers work most frequently with youngsters. The police and probation officers send many kids to the gym, and as a result, many have found Jesus Christ, including several gang members in Costa Mesa. Others come from Calvary Chapel, Melody Christian Center, and other churches located throughout the county that work with young people for physical rehabilitation. Bob helps rebuild their bodies, which many times have been wasted from drug addiction. And he encourages young converts to grow in grace at the same time. Gene works with the ladies on Tuesday and Thursdays in weight reduction and fitness programs. Many have confided in their special problems in her, their special problems, and she's often been able to point them to the one answer, God's Son. A lady came in one day with a load of trouble, she recalled. She'd been coming in quite regularly, but I was waiting on the Lord before I approached her. When everyone else left, When everyone else left, I was able to lead her to Christ, and now he is carrying her burdens. 
Vancouver's gym has a young man named Mike who works out with the men on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and a half day on Saturday. He told me that he had barely made it through high school. He had done time in jail for three counts of burglary and had taken drugs. God dealt with him through Campus Crusade, and at the age of 21, he accepted the Savior at a Billy Graham crusade in Anaheim. When he first visited the gym, he was a long-haired new Christian. But he went to Bible college in preparation, and God gave him a job. Bob gave him a job. I had to learn, I had a lot to learn about God's ways, Mike declared. He's so big and powerful that we can't box him in. The gym is not just a physical thing. We're here to win souls. Nobody in the gym business has ever sprung forth in this way for God, to my knowledge. It's the prayer of the Zubers that other Christians interested in the business will catch the spirit and open Christ-oriented gyms throughout the country. We'd like to see a Christian gym in every major city, they said fervently. We believe that Christ is the answer for everyone and we're willing to help any church or Christian couple by teaching them how to run a gym and by setting up the gym at near cost. Something is needed to replace the non-Christian health clubs and this is a fantastic means of winning people to the Lord. Which brings us right back to Bob's statement earlier that weightlifters need Christ too and it's a wide open ministry. Now I happen to get to know Jean before she passed away several years ago. And I know Bob Jr., also a really good guy. Um, really just a great family, great Christian family. And I think this gym probably helped to lead a lot of people to Christ, and especially a lot of young people. So, again, besides just having an awesome gym, and they made the equipment for several of the world's strongest man contests, uh, their, their plates are world-renowned and uh, have become huge collector's items. Um, but besides all that, they, they made a big difference in people's lives, and that's really what it's all about.